Lesson 11.2, simplifying radical expressions. Now this bugs the heck out of people because if you had a square root of say 9, you know it equals 3. And if you had a square root of 10, you'd go to your calculator and get 3.1 or something like that. Well, math geeks don't do that. Math geeks, if it works, yes. If it doesn't work, no. We leave it in radical form. And the key numbers we need are the perfect squares. 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, 121, maybe a few more after that. But we'll start with those, and we rewrite these. When you have a radical, you can break it down into two things that are being multiplied in separate radicals. So we come back to our list over here. And we say, which one of those is in here? Most people look and see 4. I think we can do better, but let's go with 4, because you can do this a lot of different ways. And you go 4 times 8. The square root of 4 is 2, and you say, great, 2 radical 8, I'm done. Well, no, you're not, because there's more that goes into 8. You have to get any of these numbers out, and it looks like we could also take 4 out of there. So that'd be 2 times 2 times radical 2, which is 4 radical 2. You can keep all that writing. I'm going to erase it, and I'll explain why momentarily. Besides taking up a lot of room, what I would have done is looked at this and said, oh, I know that 16 goes in there. Square root of 16 is 4. And that's 4 radical 2. And if you look, you should see that we got the exact same answer either way. So the key is when you're done, look at what is inside the radical and say, can I get anything else out of there? Are there any more perfect squares from this list down here that are inside that radical? Root 75. And these I just happen to know. Now you're going to have to play with these until you get good at them. Which one of these? Let's see if 25 goes in. And I'd pull out my calculator and say 75 divided by 25 and find out that it's 3. And then, oh, square root of 25 is 5. It leaves me with a radical 3. Go over here. Now we have an x squared. These are a little tricky for people. What you need to know is when you're dealing with a variable, and I'll put this one out here, a square root is the same as saying to the 1 half. So, x squared to the 1 half, if you remember from laws of exponents, you multiply those and you end up with an x. So, I won't be doing that technique. I just know in my head, if I have x squared, it's like taking half of it. And over here, I know that 4 and root 6 go in. So, I get 2 root 6. 2 times 1 half is 1, x to the first, but of course we don't write the 1, we just leave it. 2x, root 6. Always put everything in front of the radical, otherwise it looks like it might be under the radical sign. If we left the x there, it looks like it's root 6x, even though it wasn't. Same thing over here, root 4, that's the biggest I can take out. Root 2, sorry I want to change colors here so it's easier to see. Root 4, root 2, and x to the 4th is like at multiplying it the 4 by 1 half. So we get 2x squared. I'm pulling this out front immediately. Radical 2. That's a lot. That's a lot. These four problems that I did fairly quickly, it's going to take you a while to get a good firm handle on, but I'll give you lots of practice. This is more practice, even though it doesn't look like it, because you just multiply them together. Root 6 times root 6 is root 36. And that's a perfect square, so it's just 6. And I recommend that you don't do what I just did. You do it the first time, so you understand it. But root 7 times root 7, don't say it's root 49. Just say the root of a number times the root of itself is going to be 7. That's it. Over here, we keep the 4 out front. We cram everything else together. 3x squared. 
4 times root 3 times root x squared. x squared times 1 half for the radical. 4x root 3. That's it. You need to slow down, make sure you know what you're doing, but lots of practice comes along quite quickly. This one, the 3 is out front, so leave it. Everything else crammed together. 7 x squared y squared we can break that down into root 7 root x squared root y squared x y root 7 now I'm going to change this problem up from the typical way I would do it I would typically just cram them together inside and say that that would be x squared root 2. I'm going to do it a little bit differently. I'm going to break down the first part, root 2. I need a perfect square up here. Pardon me. I need an even number up here, x to the third. The biggest even number is just one less. It's x squared. I know from the rules of exponents that x, invisible 1 here, times x squared, is x to the third. And I still have a radical x over here from this one. So I broke this one down into that. I can take the x out, leaves me with root 2x, leaves me 2x squared. I look at this and say, great, I'm done. Whoop, whoop. No, I'm not. I have to keep going. x squared root 2, which as you see is the same answer. This is clearly a lot easier to do it, and it's the way I actually recommend, but I wanted to show you how if we have a radical, say a radical y to the 7th, we break that down into radical y to the 6th times radical y. 6 is the greatest even number that goes in, and then we take the square root of that and leave the other part inside the radical. That also takes some practice and some getting used to. Now, how do we divide? Well, we're able to break the things we multiplied. We can also just break the things that we divide. The same as doing this. The top has no perfect one that goes in. The bottom is 10. We're done. Try this one on your own if you want. It's pretty simple. Just root 7 over x. And that's about it. Now, there's a lot more in this unit, this lesson. But we're going to stop there so that you can practice because this stuff is tricky, especially if you haven't seen it before. Once you get good at it, it seems ridiculously easy. But until you get to that point, which takes a lot of practice, it is very tricky. Good luck.